Did you know Verkada just released uh, H.265 and that will improve greatly the quality of your cameras? If this statement doesn't make much sense to you, uh, stick around because in the next video I'll be explaining what a codec is and how we at Verkada are using it. So, taking a step back, a codec which is short for coder decoder is a piece of computer algorithm that allows you to efficiently store and transmit information such as pictures audio and video and even for those of you less technically inclined i'm sure you have heard of things such as jpeg mp3 and the likes these are just names used for well-known codecs when it comes to pictures jpeg or audio mp3 and i'm sure you might have seen for example a professional uh, photograph it takes a lot of megabytes you need a lot of space to store a few of them and it takes a lot of time to transmit but if you take one of those and you compare it with a compressed equivalent unless you do a lot of digital zoom you're actually not gonna be noticing a difference so most of these codecs actually achieve great levels of compression thus reducing the bandwidth required for transmission or the size for storage without actually impacting on the quality that you perceive obviously if you go there and uh, create a massive poster uh, on the size of this wall uh, most likely you might want to use the original image however for display purposes showing it to other people, looking at it over the phone or the laptop, the JPEG equivalent, which is much, much smaller, will have the same perceived quality. Now, when it comes to video, the most widely used codec is H.264, also known as the Advanced Video Codec. It is used not only in Blu-ray discs, because it can support up to an 8K resolution, but also in most streaming platforms today. So if you use Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, etc., they all actually use H.264 in order to transmit that information towards the device that you are using. So again, the main reason that we use Codex today is because it will be very, very hard and inefficient to store or transmit the information in its raw format. And there are lots of uh, mathematics behind the inner workings of a codec. But on a high level, the reason that they are very, very efficient is because instead of transmitting 24 pictures a second, the codec will actually transmit the difference between each of those pictures. So if you think about this, looking at this video now, besides my head and hands that are moving, everything else is static. So it makes no sense for every second to transmit at least 24 images. From time to time, we transmit the whole image, but afterwards, we just transmit the difference between these frames, thus achieving our desired compression. So to summarize the reasons why H.264 became the most widely used codec today is because it does support high definition. It requires low amounts of bandwidth. So clients that might be using slow internet connections can still look at videos. Has low storage demands and it is vendor agnostic. And up until a, a month ago, all the Verkada cameras were recording and streaming using H.264. And then we announced the support for a newer codec, a better codec h265 and although the codec itself did not just get released the main reason that we took so long to implement it on the verkada side is because up until last autumn google chrome which is the browser of choice for most of our customers did not support the h265 decoding and obviously as a business because we are geared towards simplicity ease of use and do not want to put you in a position to utilize specific software or specific versions of code, we realize that releasing 265 ahead of time will actually not help. Now that Google Chrome, alongside all the modern browsers, support H265, 
it was just the right time to release it as part of a free firmware upgrade for all the Verkada cameras. So even if you have a camera that you purchased a few years ago, you will still be able to turn H.265 on. Now, what does make H.265 so special compared to its predecessor? In a nutshell, it is able to achieve the same levels of quality with around 25 to 50% less bandwidth. So the mathematics behind the algorithms are even more advanced, meaning that you need less storage space and it's much easier to transmit the data. Now, at this point, you might be assuming that once you turn on H.265 on your Verkada cameras, you should automatically see a decrease in bandwidth utilization. However, our product team decided to actually keep the same constant bit rates. And if you want more information about the way that you should visualize bandwidth, I do have a, a video and I will leave a link here. So getting back on track, what's the actual implications of us maintaining the same constant bandwidth numbers as before? Well, simply, this means that the new streams will have a much better quality. Remember, more quality, more bandwidth needed. Less bandwidth, less quality. And there are a few cases where this becomes clear. First of all, when you do digital zoom, so this is, for example, a picture I took in my garden of some of the rattan furniture and the decking, you'll see that on the right-hand side, it is much clearer. The frame is very, very busy. I've done digital zoom on top of that. And this is where a codec like H.264, which, remember, was geared towards transmission and compression as opposed to quality, will start struggling, while H.265 does a way better job. Secondly, if you have a lot of motion in the frame, let's say you put this on a busy hallway or an intersection and such, sometimes if there are loads of people or vehicles in the frame itself, H.264 might struggle. You might see artifacts in the image, pixelation, slight delays, and that is because, remember how these codecs work, they transmit the delta between the frames, not the frames themselves. So what happens if you're low on bandwidth and there's lots of information between the frames? Well, something has to give and you'll actually get these so-called artifacts. And H.265, because we maintained the same level of bandwidth, now has this leeway to allow it to handle busy frames much, much better. So what's the drawback of H.265 and why doesn't everybody use it? Well, as I mentioned previously, it is quite a new algorithm and it does not have as widespread support and compatibility as H.264. Secondly, you will need quite a performant and new machine in order to decode it. Remember, the laptop, the phone, the tablet is the one that will decode the stream. There are clear guidelines on the types of devices that you should have. I will leave a link here so you can check if your machine is able to run H.265. So at this point, you might be wondering, should you really turn on H.265 and risk some of your clients not being able to pull footage? Well, I got some good news on that front because as we released the feature, we also enabled what's called cloud transcoding. And this is the ability of command to realize that the client trying to pull the footage can't decode H.265 and it will automatically convert that to H.264. So from an end user perspective, they will still be able to pull footage. There are a couple of caveats. First of all, if you were doing local streaming and all of a sudden you need cloud transcoding because of the cloud element, local streaming will not work anymore. And this is a good thing to check just in case you were expecting local streaming to work and all of a sudden it doesn't. Check your firewalls. TCP 4100 is allowed to flow both ways. We can't just figure out why local streaming doesn't work. Well, it might be because the camera utilizes H.265 and the client does not support decoding it. Secondly, the RTSP streams are locally transmitted from the camera into your collector and we cannot force them through the cloud. So make sure that whatever device you push your RTSP streams into 
is able to handle H.265 before turning that feature on. So, to summarize, H.264 was the main way that Verkada cameras were encoding and transmitting data up until a couple of months ago when we announced support for H.265 due to Google Chrome, the main browser people tend to use, now supports it as well. There are requirements from your machine to be able to decode this, although if it cannot do so, we'll be able to utilize the cloud automatically to transcode it back to H.264. And in a nutshell, the reasons why you should turn it on is because you'll actually see improved performance, especially in busy scenes where there's lots of traffic and when doing digital zoom. If you have any questions, please leave them here. And if not, just go ahead and turn H.265 on. It's in the setting page of your cameras.